morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Andrei Popa, and I am uh, the reservoir management supervisor for the San Joaquin Valley Business Unit in uh, Bakersfield, California. In addition to my role, I also have the privilege of uh, have been teaching at the uh, University of Southern California for the last 10 years. So uh, my, uh, uh, my uh, presentation today uh, will try to um, um, address both, uh, both my observations from the academia in the last 10 years, as well as working uh, in uh, Chevron assets with uh, most of the new hires, as well as the experienced ones. So uh, how do I see the current state in the academia? I think we are doing a fantastic job when we have a very strong curriculum focus on the theoretical foundation. We are providing our, uh, our students with very strong concepts uh, and equations to be successful in the oil industry and reflect very well in the job that we are doing. However, if my observation is that the analytical solutions that we are presenting them, they um, are relatively using uh, uh, perfect data or relatively perfect data or stimulated data, and sometimes they, they kind of address ideal conditions. When they come in the industry, they deal with a lot of other issues that are very different, whatever they learn and so forth, especially for the whole heavy oil operation that I have been dealing with. Also, in terms of the testing, what I have observed is that mostly uh, testing the fundamental concept, and sometimes I see that it lacks some practical application and so forth. In terms of the, in terms of the data, uh, when it comes to the graduate programs, I've seen that they are more fluid in working with large volumes of data and the master and PhD whenever they have this kind of research and they have the availability of this information. So um, now I'm going to move to the current state, the way I'm looking at it. So what are we doing in the industry right now? So uh, it's trying to, the industry is trying to improve the margins, both by decreasing the cost and increasing production. And this is mostly because of the drop in the oil price that we've all been through. So there is an aspiration out there that we're going to be more effective if we are do, uh, addressing some sort of digital transformations. And this is this digital transformation, they are very different from each one of the companies, and they have different programs. It's mostly driving insight for the data and making better decision making. We are collecting significant amount of data from our assets. So uh, for the asset that I'm working on, there are 17,000 wells. One field alone has 10,000 wells. So even the smaller asset that we have, they're highly instrumented, and we have somewhere around 500,000 data points that come in our database per minute at well level. That's a significant amount of information that we have to deal with. And in addition to this, uh, we have up to about a couple of eight engineers looking at 10,000 wells and so forth. So you cannot really do that just by looking at every single well. Rather, you need to have some tools that operate by exception and so forth. So what the industry is trying to do, it's aspire to find uh, uh, this effectiveness by utilizing new technologies that can draw uh, better insights from the data. Uh, in top of this, uh, somehow the industry expects that all these petroleum engineers that we have are able to utilize these volumes of data and also the new technology to drive this insight. So whenever these data uh, skills are missing, what they are doing, they are trying to reach outside and hire non-PEs to fill this gap. And there is kind of a very interesting point here because every time when you hire non-PEs in the industry, you are dealing with a different issue because they don't really understand the fundamentals of our petroleum industry industry, as well they don't get the physics that are behind all this data. So kind of get some sort of Mickey Mouse solutions from them uh, at the end of the day. And another observation that I have, and I don't know if you agree with me or not, the cross-training seems not to have been successful so far. And I kind of look this in two ways. There is not enough uh, emphasis in training our petroleum engineers in data science skills. And also, on the other hand, uh, the, uh, the um, non-PEs are not, are not really learning what the fundamentals of our oil industry is. So. Um, in in uh, where we are going in the future. So um, I think that in the future, uh, the um, reliance on the data in the oil and gas industry will only continue to improve. The data integration will be in almost every phase of the field uh, development from exploration to op operations. Uh, what I'm trying to say is not that we don't have a lot of data that we are working on this. It's just the volumes will be larger and larger and so forth. In addition to these uh, technologies uh, and, and applications that we are trying to leverage with are automated subsurface modeling, uh, which moves also on the predictive analytics and so forth. 
the auto autonomous drilling, which is not only robotics, it's also the streams of data they come and predicting ahead of the beat uh, what we are getting to, uh, how to avoid loss circulation, how to avoid uh, uh, stock pipe and so forth. The one that I'm most interested in in this uh, circle that all reflect the volumes of data that will be collected and used in our operations are predictive maintenance. From my experience and everything that I've seen around is that generally what we are doing, we are a reactive business. We are all the time waiting for our wells to fail between we act on them and so forth. So being able to diagnose prior to this, uh, it's significant business value for our industry. And this cannot really be done with simple analytical solutions. Most of the time you need to look at the data and the antecedents and the practical uh, value that you get from previous cases in order to be able to do that. Uh, and also real-time production optimization, optimization um, that a lot of the companies are doing, but there is a lot to do in that space as well. So from those two uh, components that I just uh, discussed earlier, I think that there is a little bit of a gap in between program engineering, petroleum engineering curriculums, uh, and what the industry is having in the future. So um, a couple of points I'd like to make. One is that the exposure to the data. You heard from actually data science. Um, I do believe that we need to give uh, our students a little bit more exposure to the both structured and unstructured data. In terms of that structure, unstructured, I can talk a lot about streams. I can talk a lot about volumes of data. I can even talk about a lot of pictures and other things like that. Uh, Data-driven analytics, you heard a lot about statistics and, and, and learning and machine uh, learning as well as, as artificial intelligence. My experience right now with the volumes of data that we have from our fields in, in San Joaquin Valley is that you don't necessarily need to end up with artificial uh, intelligence solution at the end of the day. You solve most of your problems by simple data analytics and so forth. Um, and, and less perfect and more realistic. Somehow I have sensed and I have seen that when our students come into our workforce, they expect perfect data. And so that's not really the case when you get to do this. So you need to give them a little bit of, of uh, tools to work with all this data that is all available and use the best for their decisions. Now, another thing that I'm emphasizing, and I think actually and I talked a lot about, what I have observed is that the students which are coming into the organization with data science skills or any data science, any data, basic data skills, are doing much, much better in, in the organization. They are most likely to succeed. In the first one or two years, they are very innovative, they are digging through the data, they are creating new tools and processes and so forth, and usually they run circles around all the other students. So what is really happening, they are really quickly uh, um, noticed by the managers and put in special projects and they grow pretty much exponentially. When I talk about these basic skills, I'm also not talking about uh, how to access the data, how to QC the data and so forth. I'm also gonna um, echo uh, Todd here who said, you know, basic programming skills. A lot of the um, analytics run around ri running small scripts and so forth and finding patterns in the data. And those are very, very useful and very successful for delivering the business value that we need. The last point here, all these students, uh, petroleum engineers with data science can very high demand because every time they are to be selected for new jobs, every single manager want to have them in their organization. As the data complexity is increasing, as the more we use big data, streams data, and so forth, the need of new technologies and data science capabilities, such as artificial intelligence and machine learning, will take the industry to the next level to achieve the efficiency that they are aspiring to. So um, some ideas to close the gap. So first of all, uh, I heard that Stanford it does offer a couple of courses in data science. And uh, if this is not possible to add a data science in the curriculum, which I do know there is a limited amount of coursework and so forth, the suggestion is to add certain components of the data science in each one of the classes, such as in drilling and production and reservoir and so forth, um, and give students a little bit more exposure on what to expect when they come in and what the tools are available out there to work with, not necessarily how exactly to work with. Um, the assignments would also be more structured, should also be more structured in developing more data skills. I did like when I was in school, they were giving us a lot of programming assignments and that really made me uh, very, very efficient when I joined uh, the organization to practically know how to query and to put together small uh, programs that would, uh, would uh, create significant impact. 
And uh, there is another suggestion here is that you can use guest lecturers to, who can come and give uh, students uh, examples of uh, data analytics problems. They can discuss about the volumes of data that we are dealing with and so forth. And it's a very, very efficient way to bridge and introduce the students to the real life problems. So I have a thought here. You can't teach everything in school, uh, but you can give the students a better awareness and understanding of what skills are required to be successful in the oil and gas industry. So uh, in closing, a couple of uh, thoughts that I have is that uh, the industry focus has shifted to be more data centric. Uh, I think that you all agree with this. And in the future, uh, it's going to be even more. Um, I also have observed that uh, the industry has not been successful in cross-training their current petroleum engineering workforce in data science skills. So what I do believe, I do believe that the engineers who are coming out in the industry in the future, uh, in the next generations, should have a little bit more of uh, this kind of uh, capabilities to, to, to do that. And uh, students should be equipped with data science in addition to the petroleum engineering skills. And I made a point there, generally, when you do, non, you do bring non-petroleum engineering in the, in the programs, you don't really get the results that are expected. And uh, um, changes in the curriculum um, uh, by adding applied data science uh, classes or some materials within the courses, exposure to structured and unstructured data, which pretty much is going to be the future, uh, and also um, um, guest lecturers probably should uh, um, achieve this goal on moving the curriculum in more data-centric world. <laughs>